ba 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 Oh. Where is it? No. Ah! I'm Almost. Let's get some material for a novelist. Uh, 6,000 gold. We want someone to venture inside a cave and tell them of their adventures inside. And it seems to have a lot of undead creatures. I wonder what, what it looks like. Novelist? That sounds hard. I don't want to go, meow. Well, I shall take that. I don't know much about novels, so I'll go saying bye bye for now, meow. First, go see him personally. Good luck. To generic client's house. There he is, generic client. To get right to the point, I want you to explore the cave that's by the Estamine shore. I don't mind going, but what am I supposed to do? Well, first head towards the lowest level. It's supposed to be a dangerous cave, so I'm sure something interesting will happen. There's supposed to be some powerful creature that lives down there. I think you'll fight with it with real good material. Okay. <sighs> Yay, I did it. And I got several crab's legs and everybody got a level up. I did defeat the monster, but... Alright, and tell me what happened. I'll use it to write my, advi my adventure story. Then, after finishing relating the story... Alright, I'm all set. What kind of novel is he writing anyway? This love story will be last for generations. But... Love story? But I went on an adventure! Yeah, I've been looking for some good material for a love story. Uh, what about the adventure novel? What happened to the adventure story? Well, if he got some other good ideas out of it, it's okay, isn't it? Well, hmm. Yay, got a reward! I've built... I've actually built quite a good VTOL design here, because I've got the centre of mass and the centre of lift at the same point, And the centre of thrust directly above it. Let's see how well this flies. Does it fly at all? Nope, doesn't fly at all. <laughs> doesn't fly! I think I need some forward propulsion in order to actually get that thing going. Unfortunately, um, the game has a bit of a problem, I think, with the upwards, upwards propulsion when it's not dealing with VTOLs. Um, blast, I was hoping this would actually be kind of amusing and actually do something. Alright. Let's see how this works. Hey! We have forward motion! 
And there goes our forward motion. Oh well. At least I got a self self writing mechanism on there. <laughs> That's handy at least. And I can maintain a speed of one mile an hour. Arr! Come on. Come on, do something. Flaps. Flaps. Flap your flappies. No. Um. Anyway, there you go. That's what I've been doing. I'm going to stop recording and they keep on going. It's until this bloody guy is dead. Only when he's dead, I'll then pick up the recording again and go, he's fucking dead. I fucking got him. Critical hit for 144 hit points of damage. Um, helped that I uh, I kind of ODing on Psycho right now. So the fact that if I scan up here, uh, you can see he's only hitting for me for 3 and 2 instead of 20. But still, yeah, it's, it's it finally got the bugger. Now Tycho is actually getting pummeled paper right over here. He's only taking like a couple of hit points per damage per blow. Unless it's from uh, McRae here, who's doing like 5 or 10. But finally got the fucking hammer guy. And even the in the leader, the leader of the blades isn't as tough as that hammer guy. So I've no idea who he is. He's just like, oh, it's just a member of the blades. Yeah, it is stupidly hard. Yeah, that's right, dog. You finish off the. See, the rest of the camp is like 20 hit points and they're dead. Ah, oh, no, sometimes the game makes me angry. It doesn't take a lot, <laughs> it's just like, uh, you're doing what to me now? Right, now do I get to come around here and pummel on McRae? I do. Alright, McRae. Let's take your eyes. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I can do it. Hello, whoever you are. Or whoever you were. Oh, just a regular place gang. Oh, okay. I hope I'm going to nip myself some sweet experience for this. Because it would really suck if it was like 25 XP per kill. But I'm like, oh, it's worse than killing rats. Okay, she's dead. Quickly hit for 43. And that one's dead. I'm going to enjoy burying you in a shallow grave, says a guy strolling up after all of his mates have been killed. Uh, you might want to go away now. And thank you. And I'm going to head up over this way. Attack! She says, running away. Oh no, she's going after the dog. Oh dear. Fond of historical reasons. But these mortals pose no such threat. They are few in number, and while they do have a strong position between two rocks, they can be flanked easily enough. It will not take long for these fools to join our unliving ranks. There's my army. Right. So, this is the Empire position. You can see they have a couple of units of halberdiers, spearmen, uh, crossbowmen, their leader hands there, some more swordsmen, some handgunners, more swordsmen, more halberdiers, and the Reichsguard, who are like the top tier. Uh, cavalry that the Empire can get. Um, generally, if you're ever going to go up against the Empire, 
and it says, oh, they've got shot cavalry. Chances are they're probably going to be Reichsguard. Uh, but let's see. So what am I going to do? I am going to say all this lot are expendable. All of them. Um, you are also kind of expendable, but maybe not quite as such. Uh, zombies can go there, zombies can go there. Uh, Kemler can go in the back here with his can wraiths. And the hex wraiths can sit back here with the banshee. All the dogs will not be doing it. Right, right. So that's going to be force number one. Now, interesting thing about the wolves is they've got something called a vanguard move, which means they are not limited to setting up in this yellow area. They can set up anywhere in the white area as well. So you can see, I can set up all the way over here. It says, oh, you're going to flank them, you're going to flank them. Yeah, I am going to flank them, because I'm going to deploy my wolves back here, ready to just start striking at them. Right there. That's group two. In fact, I could even start them right here if I wanted to. Um, Vanguard troops generally tend to be fast, light, and quite expendable. You never tend to get heavier troops. If you did, even if you had like um, Vanguard archers, you'd just, like, stick them all here and just go, look, I'll start in firing range. What fools to come to our lands. Let's us show that night is full of darkness and shadow. Right, let's see how that works. We have Zelda Cam. Let's have Zelda Cam. Where's Zelda? There she is. Zelda Cam. She goes trying to find that man. Uh, no, she found some Empire swordsmen instead. Where's Hans? Where's he gone? There he is. Push forward. Can you get to Hans? Yeah, break free. Excellent. Right, chase Hans down. Champions are. Very powerful in this. Very, very powerful. Um, uh, dead. dead. Uh, yeah, I had a, a level one vampire lord take on over 350 infantry and win on his own. He was ridiculously powerful. Okay, I'm gonna commit some of the reserves. In fact, about the only reserves I've got that I'm committing. Uh, Spearman, if you can, just come over here. And it looks like they're mostly running away. Uh, do you want to maybe get involved in that fight? Unless you are already involved in that fight. Just follow Zelda here, see where she's going. Shattered army losses. Is she still trying to chase our hands or his hands and died? Oh, well, I've got victory. Uh, that was the Battle of Hellfen. I know it mostly was just following this uh, ghost lady around, but um, still, it's not bad. Not bad. I uh, yeah, some like wolves suffered, uh, but then they were supposed to. Um, I think I lost a unit of skeletons. Zombies are all there, Spearmen are still there, everyone else is still there, and these guys look like they probably took out the Reichsguard without really suffering any damage. So yeah, there you go. The Battle of Hellfen. You see an Asian man in soiled and tattered clothes frantically pacing in the corner. His shock of filthy white hair sticks out in every direction, 
and his face encrusted with dirt and streaks of dried blood is covered with grey stubble. Every few seconds he stops pacing and flails about suddenly, muttering and cursing if he's assaulted by some unseen foe. He does not seem to notice your approach. Hello? The sound of your voice, the old man whirls around, his wide, staring eyes bulging from their sockets. He regards you for a brief moment, then returns to his raving. No, no, no! It's not you, hoo hoo, but soon, yes, soon. Uh, who are you talking to? The old man seems oblivious to your presence. Hoo hoo hoo, you'll come, yes, you'll come, and old Nestor will be waiting. Uh, who are you waiting for? Waiting, yes! He suddenly plops down on the floor as if overcome by exhaustion. Long have I waited, waiting! He takes a deep breath and springs back to his feet. Wait forever if I have to! Do you hear me? Uh, are you okay? No! Nistel's face turns beet red and his whole body shakes in protest. My fork! Can't leave without my fork! Hoo hoo! Fork, fork, fork! Your fork? Fork, fork, fork! Can't go home without my fork! This is Frenzy reaches a violent crescendo. He begins hopping up and down manically, and suddenly stops, lowers his head, and runs headlong into a large wooden cupboard that stands at the back of the flop house. Force the impact knocks the old man flat on his back. After a few seconds, he stands back up, a dazed expression on his face. Gone! Stolen! Can't go home without my fork! Stolen, you say? Who took your fork? Nestor stares at you for a long moment, then begins rummaging through pockets with a filthy tunic. After a few seconds, he produces what appears to be a dismembered ear. Judging by the stench and colour, you imagine the old loon has been turning around his pocket for some time. You have my fork, don't you? Don't you? Hoo hoo! He holds the ear closer, speaking to it. Bring back my fork! If I can find your fork, will you leave? Wait, wait, waiting! Hoo hoo! He shakes the ear violently as he shouts into it. Until you bring it back! Then I go home! Right, I'll go and try and find Updated your fork. My journal. It's not hard to find his fork, you just have to go out the door, really. Over here and speak to one ear, because he only has one ear. Probably it's very similar to the other ear that, that, that uh, Poirot Nestor has. You see a shady looking fellow standing before you, picking his teeth with what appears to be a tiny metal fork. His chest is covered by a patchwork armour adorned with large spikes, and a long knife hands at his side. You notice he's missing his right ear. Greetings! Updated my journal. He regards you coldly from the shadows, as if sizing you up. I said, Greetings! What's the matter, your other ear not working? One ear tiefling scowls at you threateningly. Pike off, Burke, or I'll have your guts for garters. If it's garters you're after, I just have to have a pair. Your mother lent over my bed last night. You sure to have a sharp tongue, Burke. I think I'll cut it out and feed it to you. He lunges for you, knife leading the way. Kick his ass. Eh, he's doing sun damage to me. Not a lot, but some. Eh, not a solid blow from me. Dead. Small fork, copper earring, and a high quality stiletto. But I'm overburdened. Well, not overburdened, my pack's full. Uh, so let's give. Let's give the books to more over there. Take that. Uh, what was his bracelet? Oh, magic bracelet that I haven't identified yet. Okay, that's fine. That's a plus one dagger. Uh. Let's move the charcoal charm up here. There we go. Might need the scalpel later, I don't know. Clock charm there. Right. Back we I'm go on. into the flop house. And once again, over to Arlo. Well, not Arlo, sorry, Nestor. That guy's Arlo. The old man stops his frantic pacing and glances at you even nervously. Fork, fork, fork! Can't go home without my fork! Uh, is this the fork you speak of? Nestor hastily straps up the fork. 
My fork? Fork, 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 hoo hoo! He hops up and down excitedly, waving the fork back and forth in an elaborate pattern above his head, as if he were performing some sort of ritual. Now I can go home. Farewell, hoo hoo! Farewell, Nestor. Nestor turns to leave, then, as if struck by some afterthought, he turns back and hands you the scrap of something soft and rubbery, the severed ear. Upon closer examination, you notice that there's an earring still dangling from it. Pocket the earring and discard the ear. My journal. Zoom, and he is now gone. 